My name is Phil Erickson, and I'm a senior solutions consultant here at Concur. And I wanted to spend some time today and do an overview of the Concur spend platform and specifically the spending that relates to accounts payable and how Concur helps our customers automate, capture data, process invoices, and queue everything up for payment all within our system. Uh, so when we think about Concur as a whole, and for, for anybody that's not aware of the Concur platform, it is designed as a full spend payables platform, right? And traditionally the Concur reputation has been around travel and expense, making it easier for employees to book travel, submit expense reports and get reimbursed within, within the system. The other leg to that three-legged stool is accounts payable. So you have travel, expense, and AP. And when we think about organizations and the just sheer volume of transactions, accounts payable tends to have a, a greater impact on the business. Higher dollar value, higher transaction count, and frankly, just a lot more manual effort goes into processing vendor bills than the traditional expense reports. Right. So what I want to focus on today is within Concur, how do we across the board capture, process and pay vendor or supplier invoices natively within our tool? And this is going to relate to both PO and non PO spend. All of that can be done, processed and captured within within our system. Um, across this entire uh, span, right throughout the throughout the life cycle of an invoice, visibility is going to be paramount that's key number one is whether the vendor just sent the invoice into the concur ap inbox all the way through the payment confirmation coming off the back end ap teams finance teams treasury will all have visibility from the very beginning to the very end so at any point we can see where invoices are at whose desk they're sitting on when were they approved all of that is tracked and and, and monitored within concur okay um when we talk about capture it's really about the inbound transactions. How do we get them in the Concur? How do we digitize them? How do we make them available for the processing approvals, the two-way or three-way matching if they're PO related, and then uh, at the end, queue them up for payment, whether it's check, ACH, virtual cards, wire transfers, right? What, what are the options that go into that? So this is gonna be the, kind of the roadmap of my overview today. And I want to make sure that we have a, a good understanding of each of these processes. On the front end, from my experience and talking to customers, the capture piece is typically the most manually intensive. Uh, there's a lot of manual entry, there's maybe scanning, uploading, uh, saving of different documents, whether it's in a shared drive or a file cabinet, um, Excel, you know, entering into Excel files. Just that inbound capture takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so what we've done with that in order to accelerate this and automate this is we've used AI to automatically import invoices directly from suppliers via a AP inbox that Concur hosts and maintains. So vendors are emailing invoices now directly into the Concur tool. Nobody at your organization has to open emails, has to touch the PDFs, the Word files, the Excel documents. The, the format of the invoice itself is very much universal. It doesn't really matter what format the invoice is coming in as. Um, I've seen handwritten invoices scanned in as a PDF and then uploaded into this through email. And we're still able to capture that because of the AI verification, the five layers that we have built into this capture process ensure two very important things. A 98% accuracy rate in a 48 hour turnaround time. And those are at the, at the top. That's the max it would take in order for an invoice to get oh, uh, turned into a transaction inside of Concur. Right, so think about this, vendor hits send on the email, your AP team has visibility into it. As soon as that email hits the inbox, your AP team can track and see what the inbound uh, invoice looks like. But what AI is doing is it is doing a full pixelated scrub of that invoice. It is populating the corresponding fields in Concur, header, line items, vendor, all that detail. And then it's verifying that what it just populated is in fact, what is a match on that invoice image on that file. And so we're able to turn that around usually same day, but no longer than 48 hours from a contractual standpoint to provide the transaction details inside of Concur. And so what that looks like, again, this is all behind the scenes, you know, kind of pulling the curtain back a little bit on what the technology is doing. It is taking that inbound transaction, again, PDF, Word docs, scanned in paper, it doesn't matter, JPEGs, 
and it's using the AI to pull and extract the data off of this image, populate the fields, and then it does a verification around a few different checks, right? One of them being the vendor. So we pull, we extract all the vendor details, the address, the payee information, vendor name, and not only do we populate that and concur, but that verification now checks that vendor against your vendor master file that we're importing from your ERP on a regular basis. So we know, is this a known vendor? Is this an approved vendor? Um, does this vendor have all of the corresponding documentation for US organization to, to work with them? All of that's happening instantaneously. And if there's any exceptions or any, any flags in that process, it triggers a, a halt, it triggers an exception rule. So somebody from AP has a queue that they can manage in terms of what is not complete for that, that given vendor, right? So we starting, we're starting to turn this into exception management instead of reviewing every single invoice. I mentioned the header details were all populated, PO numbers, due dates, subtotals, um, all of the line item information can get extracted off. So when we think about doing two-way and three-way matching back to a purchase order and goods receipts, the PO, the line item detail becomes very critical. So we're capturing all of that as well. And then lastly, this invoice, this transaction is gonna get routed to somebody. We, we refer to them as the invoice owner, but it's traditionally the buyer, the, the vendor contact, whoever you know is in charge of this purchase, whoever made this purchase, the tool and AI can actually use that to route to that original owner so they're getting the invoice essentially directly from the vendor and it's all digitized. It's all structured inside of Concur, but it's going to hopefully bypass the AP team. So there's less touch points that accounts payable has to do when it comes to disseminating the invoices out back into the organization. Now, AP can still have their, their hand on this. Um, if AP has a lot of internal knowledge about which invoices belong to whom, they can obviously still play a role in that ownership or that, that assignee. But um, as much as we can rely on the technology to do this for us, I would say let's let's automate where we can. But think of things like here, the attention to or the sold to line on the invoice, uh, the original PO owner, maybe a default person based on the vendor. So think of your legal invoices going directly to the legal team, utilities going to you know facilities management and so on. Um, just being able to, based on criteria, based on the details in the invoice, the AI can assign it out to, to those individuals at will. Okay. And so this is that, that entry point. Again, this is where we see a lot of the manual effort going into invoice management is that front end capture. A lot of times it's, it's temporary help that's doing this, or, um, we have some AP clerks that are you know, just 10 keying in invoice transactions. And now with this in place, we can maybe repurpose them into a role that is more strategic, that is going to provide a better value downstream to the business, um, kind of turn them into data analysts instead of data entry. Right. Um, so all of this is designed to take that manual lift of getting transactions from the vendors and getting them keyed into some kind of system. This is all happening automatic directly from, from the suppliers. Um, once these invoices are scanned and received or emailed and uploaded, they are going to land in somebody's queue. Okay. Now I'm logged in here as an end user, as that called a, a buyer, maybe I'm the facilities manager or I'm a, a VP on the IT side and all the IT invoices come into my queue. In my Concur profile, we have a work to zero mentality. So I can see exactly how many invoices are sitting on my desk. I can see how many are, are requiring my approval and I can start to administer that or I can start to, to manage my, my transactions. Inside of this invoice tab is my personal dashboard. These are all the invoices that I am responsible for personally. These are my unsubmitted transactions. And so I can see who the vendor is, invoice numbers, due dates, amounts, if they're matched back to a PO or not. So the PO matching results show instantly. Um, and I can modify this. I can add in custom fields as I see fit, right? If I'm in charge of certain projects or certain departmental transactions, and I wanna filter by that. I can add those uh, columns here that I can filter and sort and search and do all that kind of stuff. But inside of each of these transactions is the invoice image that was sent directly from the vendor. It is all of the header details, all the line item information that the capture process extracted for me. And I can add additional documents to this, right? This is manipulated. I can attach additional pages, whether it's an email thread or contract uh, excerpts. I can go ahead and add those in and they would be subsequent pages inside of this transaction. And this lives, this invoice transaction stays intact indefinitely. Concur hosts and stores and maintains all of this data and all the images for as long as you're a customer. 
right? So you don't have to worry about storage fees or, or data tiers or data limits. Uh, it's all cloud-based, it's all web hosted. So we, we bear the brunt of that storage capacity. But from here, the, what I wanna highlight is obviously the vendor details. So this is tracking back to the vendor and the vendor coding. We have all the line item information that was extracted off of this invoice. And then the line items themselves, I can allocate these, I can change the expense types. I can, you know, if I need to edit the line item descriptions to fit more of a, a, a standard within your uh, organizational structure, that can be done. Uh, but what I want to look at now is how we code this, how these get allocated. So this is going to be distributed against your cost tracking fields. So any of the cost tracking elements or general ledger accounts um, or any of that structure, projects, tasks, customer names, we're going to allocate to this and I can split this as many different ways as I need to. All right, and this becomes a linked list type of selection so that as I select something, it's going to pre-filter the next list so that I can't allocate this to something that is not um, possible, right? So that I don't create a distribution code or a GL split that isn't real. And what most customers end up doing is creating these templates. So we have, we can do favorites, we can do uh, pre-designed allocation splits for those reoccurring invoices or common um, allocations that happen that can be used, saved, and then, you know, users can come in here and select from a favorites list if, if we want to go that route. And then that gets saved. And you know, I have a little indicator here that that is fully distributed and fully um, allocated. The workflow itself, when I submit this for approval, the workflow itself can queue off of any of these elements, right? So whether it's the cost of the uh, allocations that I just made, whether it's uh, invoice dollar thresholds or vendor specific things, maybe I coded this to a project or a, you know, a, a certain location, all of those can play a role in how the workflow steps are deployed. So our workflow is built on an if-then logic. So if a condition in this invoice exists, send it to this person or this uh, persona for approval, right? And then the invoice automatically works its way through that approval chain so it can get the necessary sign-offs on it, okay? So this is from the end user getting an invoice submitted. Like I said before, throughout the entire process, your AP team, the AP admins, AP managers, you are going to have your own access and your own dashboard into the process as a whole. Okay. So think of this as the command center of accounts payable, right? Gone are the days of the Excel files or the red AP folder that gets passed around or trying to run, you know, SQL queries out of an ERP system. Everything is going to be managed from these primarily four buckets. These are the four different stages that invoices go through within concur. Um, the capture side is essentially the inbox. This is all of the invoices coming into the system from vendors and going through that AI scrub. So if there is an urgent need, if a vendor sent a 911 invoice or you know, I got a supplier standing in the lobby asking for a physical check, we can go in, pull the invoice out of the AI queue and process it um, with, with, within your department. Unassigned invoices are, are that is that AP team playing traffic cop, making sure that the invoice are getting assigned to the right people. Unsubmitted is that CentOS invoice we just looked at. Right, it's in somebody's desk, constantly in somebody's queue, and we're waiting for them to get that submitted into the workflow. And then the unassigned invoices are obviously any transaction that's actively sitting out there waiting for approval. Um, and then you can see the dates here. We can actually assign timers and notifications so that if invoices are sitting too long at one stage, and the email goes out, a ping to their mobile device, to their mobile app goes out, the Concur app can remind them that they have invoices to review and approve. Um, and that can all be done from the mobile app as well. Uh, but from an AP perspective, same type of thing, right? You get a dashboard that lets you sort and filter by different date elements, different components, um, any of the fields that are tracked inside of Concur AP, you can make them a filtered column within your dashboard. So you can see the information that's most important to you, right? If you think about approval status, I wanna see whose desk they're on. Um, you can do the Google search here within Concur. So if, if vendors are calling up asking for status updates, Right, we can very quickly and easily reference the, the invoices that they're talking about. So all of this, what this is doing is getting us queued up for payments. And so when it comes to concur payments, really what we're looking at doing is work with you to decide what type of payments you want to make, right? We're looking at those unpaid invoices. Um, concur natively can issue checks, ACHs, and we're adding virtual card to that payment process. Um, so within the concur tool, concur can actually print mail and distribute ACH payments, check payments and, and the like, um, all within the system. 
we can also take these approved invoices and we're going to push the transactional details back into your ERP for posting purposes. At that point, we can generate that payment queue or that payment file, the pay run out of your ERP. So you know what invoices are being paid via which method from your ERP side. And then we also have payment partners that bolt on to concur if you're looking for you know, maybe a rebate enhancement on the virtual card side, or you're doing a lot of foreign wires and we want to utilize a partner to initiate that wire transfer. Um, there's a lot of options in terms of how we generate and distribute the payments, but I would say that's going to be a, a design conversation with, with you and, and the Concur team about how we want to approach that. Um, but lastly, what I want to cover here is, is while we're tracking all this information and all this details built on the Concur side, we have full access to the reporting capabilities. Right. So within the concur tool, we're tracking all the metrics. We have all the, the aging reporting, the accruals reporting, vendor spend reporting, PO matching capabilities. We can now not only track that, but we can schedule and distribute distribute reports um, so that they're all seeing what from a department level, from a manager level, they're getting the data that they need on, on whatever cadence they feel is necessary. And then we can start to look at just building out the dashboards, building out the analytics within Concur so that these are distributed to the appropriate people, um, looking at not just dashboards, but drill down into the reporting that drives that. And this is now how we're starting to look at spend data within accounts payable is, is all from a dashboard type of, of approach. Okay. Um, just to wrap up, Concur is ERP agnostic. So we do have the ability to link into virtually any ERP platform, whether that's through a flat file, a API in a great direct integration, or we even have some partners that will bolt onto Concur and, and have a pre-built connector uh, for more of the popular uh, ERP systems. But all of this is designed to give you the visibility to track accounts payable, remove as much of the manual effort as possible, and then provide um, the analytics and the data reporting to make sure that as an organization, you are getting the most out of your AP department, um, that your AP department has all the tools they need to make sure we're not getting late fees on invoices, that we're not missing payments, um, that we're not creating more more headaches within, within AP simply because we don't have a mechanism to track that. So I hope you found this informational. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your Concur account team and let us know if there's anything else we can do to provide some additional insight. Thank you.